Wow, guys, Dana Bash got destroyed by J.D. Vance, and now Tulsi Gabbard, you got to check this out. Uh, Vice President Harris's Thanks, campaign Dana. manager released a memo this morning saying they expect former President Trump to be a, quote, formidable opponent on the debate stage. Do you think Kamala Harris will be a formidable opponent as well? And how is the former president preparing to debate her? Yeah, I think Kamala Harris has a lot of experience. She is not to be underestimated. Uh, president Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris have very different records. This is a unique situation where we have two candidates who have served at the highest offices in the land. President Trump, four years as president. Kamala Harris, now almost four years as vice president, working alongside President Biden. And so this will be an opportunity for voters to look at and compare and contrast those records. Uh, if, if I can be helpful to President Trump in any way, it really is just in sharing the experience that I had with her on that debate stage in 2020. And frankly, helping to point out some ways that Kamala Harris has already shown that she is trying to move away from her record, move away from her positions, and uh, how that contradicts the positions and statements that she is making now that she is the Democratic nominee. And it is a remarkable situation in that you are uh, a... Uh... I'm not going to pause this one as much, guys, but pay attention to her body language and how she speaks. I think she's scared of Tulsi Gabbard. I think she knows what's coming. I think this is not going to end well for it. Let's keep going. Helping the Republican uh, nominee to debate her. A and on that, I remember in 2020, you attacked Harris for being too aggressive as a prosecutor, which is the opposite from what Donald Trump is saying about her as weak on crime. So which is it? What I pointed out in that debate stage in the 2020 campaign was her hypocrisy. It was how she was saying one thing and doing another, how she was prosecuting people for, for smoking marijuana and laughing about it when she was asked about it uh, on a radio show. And I think this goes to the heart of many of these different issues that we're seeing now that Kamala Harris is, is trying to hide from voters is how she says her position is one thing, but her actions and her record show exactly the opposite. And you can point to that on issues related uh, to the economy, issues related to freedom of speech. She says she stands for freedom of speech. And yet, as we've seen time and time again, her and Joe Biden have taken actions both directly and indirectly to censor free speech. Uh, most recently, I can point to my own experience of this, of how the Harris-Biden administration have added me to a secret domestic terror watch list the very day after uh, Kamala Harris was endorsed by Joe Biden. And I was on TV and warning the American people about what I saw as the dangers of a Kamala Harris presidency taking action that was clearly political retaliation. They've done this to a lot of different people, which points to how dangerous it is to have people in power so willing to abuse that power to go after political opponents. Okay. I, uh, I'm not familiar with the secret terror watch list. We're definitely going to follow up on that. Uh, but I do want to move on to what ha is happening with regard to controversy after the former president visited Ar Arlington National Cemetery this week. His campaign took photos and video uh, of him in Section 60, where veterans uh, of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan are buried, used it in a campaign video. The Army also says that Trump staffers abruptly pushed aside a cemetery official who tried to enforce Arlington's rules prohibiting political activities. I know you were uh, with Trump at least earlier in that day uh, at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Did you witness the altercation at Section 60? 60? Uh, I was there from the, the beginning with the laying of the wreaths with the family members, the Gold Star family members and, and some of the survivors of that terrorist attack uh, in that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. I was with them at Section 60, and what I saw was a very grave and somber remembrance and honoring of those lives that were lost. And I saw President Trump spending time at the invitation of these Gold Star families with them. Uh, he was there for a few hours. I did not see or hear about any kind of altercation until something came out in the news uh, later on. The families were there uh, grieving alongside uh, President Trump. And, and it was a very special moment to 
really remember their names, remember their memories, and understand the true cost of war and, and the consequences of the decisions that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden made in the execution of that withdrawal. Yeah, and it is very clear that the uh, former president was Guys, I don't know if you could tell, but if you look at Dana Bass, she's very unprepared. She failed to do her research again. I'm glad Tulsi Gabbard is the one that's there correcting her and showing her how to like conduct yourself in an interview. Invited in his personal capacity, as you said, by uh, a, a family of uh, one of the service members who was killed uh, about, a, about two years ago during the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It the was question, three years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago to the day on me. August 26th. Yes, three years ago. The question is about the federal law and Arlington's rules that prohibit partisan or political activities at national cemeteries. And um, the military uh, and also other members of other families who are buried right near there are upset about the campaign filming it and posting the video online. Do you believe that was appropriate? You know, I checked with the campaign on this question, and uh, they have exchanges with the, the officials at Arlington Cemetery. They were approved to bring a camera there to document this historic and momentous day that should not be forgotten by any American. And to have a former president there and joining these Gold Star families, I know President Trump wanted to share that with others, especially given the fact that President Biden and Harris, I heard, were, were invited by some of these family members. They not only didn't come, they didn't even respond to that invitation. And, and now to have Kamala Harris put this statement out yesterday saying that she stands with these families, she stands with the military and with veterans, you only have to look at the response that came from the Gold Star families of these 13 service members of how offended they were by that statement, given she has not made any effort, not on that third anniversary or any other time, to call them directly to offer her condolences yeah. and even apologies for their decisions that led to the loss of their loved ones. Do you think that the campaign will release that uh, communication that you're talking about because the Army uh, is I saying they very, already clearly, had, very but... clearly that, that, was, that they broke the rules uh, because it was clearly put out online. So guys, this is what I like to see. Dana Bash is waking up to the agenda that they're trying to push. She, she, she knows she's very uncomfortable with the questions that they're making her ask. I believe she's capable of doing her job and asking the right questions. It's an interview. It's not a gotcha game. That's it. That's not what it is. I believe she's waking up, guys, and I believe she's gonna she, she's gonna switch up on CNN here soon. I believe that. Picture is video meant as a part of his campaign. I, I thought they already had. I was informed that uh, they had come to an agreement. They could bring a camera there. And as far as I know, and the public statements I've seen from the army is that the matter is closed. I think the matter is closed about the altercation, alleged altercation, which you didn't see, but I'm not sure it's closed with the idea that uh, they seem to have broken the rules and perhaps even federal law by putting out the campaign video. I, I want to ask you about... Here, here's, I'd just like to say one, one last thing on this, because I think it's important, and I've seen a lot of the, the headlines and the stories and, and the concerns that people are raising about this, but, but to me, as, as a soldier and as someone who has been deployed to different war mm -hmm. zones in the world, and I have friends who are buried there at Section 60, what is more outrageous to me is that there wasn't universal coverage of the momentous day of the third anniversary of the loss of these 13 Gold Star families and the outrage that they feel that they that their loved ones are not getting the kind of coverage and memory that their great sacrifice deserves. That That is what everyone should be outraged about. Well, yeah, we have covered the uh, horrible, horrible events uh, three years ago and, uh, and have done so several times. Uh, she she's not calling out uh she's not calling out Biden or Kamala for not showing honor to the troops that we lost. I don't I don't like this biased reporting guys. I think it's sick how they try to push and hate Trump. CNN and MSNBC need to be sued. They need to be taken off. The the biased reporting is just horrible. It's like just ugly. Over and over again. So I appreciate you also talking about their memories cuz it is important.
Before you go, uh, you said in an interview this week that you were interested in serving in a Trump administration. I just want to ask you guys a question. Who's tired of the media lies? Who's tired of the psyops they're trying to put down on you guys? Dana Bash's energy was completely different when she was interviewing J.D. Vance versus when she was interviewing Tulsi Gabbard. It's obvious that she was uncomfortable. Tulsi Gabbard conducted herself well, and she destroyed her as J.D. Vance did. Let me know what you guys think about the video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, let me know at 3 Act 2. We're out.